Hey, what's up, YouTube? Silver Dragons here. Today I'm joined by the uh, customer service manager over at Bullion Max. His name is Sean Reynolds. Welcome back, Sean. Great to be here. Great to have you. Uh, we're having a conversation about gold. Now, I know a lot of people are buying tons of silver right now. I personally am buying lots of silver, uh, but we have seen the gold-silver ratio start coming down, and it's in the 70s today, uh, but who knows where it's going to go over the next few months and few years. And as gold gets more appealing, I do expect to see more of these silver stackers kind of transition into gold stackers. Um, so what are your thoughts on purchasing gold, Sean? Because I know you've been doing this for a long time. What's sort of the best things for people to be buying? Yeah, gold is kind of interesting in that the the best way to buy it is typically by the ounce. Now, of course, that's going to disqualify a number of people from purchasing it because that's about a, a $1,900 proposition right now. Okay. But I would not let that discourage anybody from looking to purchase gold because you also have uh, fractional options. So you don't always have to buy, you know, a full ounce to get in the game. Now, there are some small amounts of gold that you can purchase, but you have to kind of watch the premiums a little bit. You know, a a, a one gram gold bar might carry a premium of, of about $35. But then again, a 10 gram gold bar may also carry a premium of about $35. So you have to kind of buy just enough to make sure you're not really being penalized if, by premiums because you're you're purchasing too little. You know, by the gram would be a little tough to do um, over the long term. That wouldn't really be a good investment because uh, you always want to try to get as much metal for your money, at least when you're stacking, right? right. So right. gold is no different. You just need to kind of understand the lay of the land and, and where the premiums kind of hit a sweet spot, depending upon what the item is. But obviously, you want to get as many grams of gold or ounces of gold as you can. So uh, basically, the if you just had unlimited money and you could pick whatever you want, uh, just go for the one ounce size because those are traditionally going to be the lowest premium. Um, and and would you say the really small stuff is kind of more for like gifts or mm -hmm. for fun? It, it's not really stacking, right? Absolutely, it, not really stacking. You're right, gifts and and we have some that that have fantastic packaging. Um, that go with it that are, you know, one gram gold bars or 2.5 grams or something like that, you know, might be happy birthday, congratulations, anything like that. Uh, yeah, I would imagine giving that to a, a graduate or something like that, including that in their card. Um, but yeah, it, it, it would be the hard way to invest in gold because you're not getting too much metal for your money when you buy those teeny tiny sizes. Yeah, you know, uh, I have I have pulled up here uh, straight from the U.S. Mint the premiums that they charge uh, when they actually sell their gold eagles wholesale. Mm -hmm. um, so the U.S. Mint only sells to authorized purchasers. I think there's about 12 of them. And mm -hmm. then these people will sell them to other dealers and whatnot. And the premiums they have listed for the one ounce, they have 3% premium. Half mm -hmm. ounce, they have a 5%. Mm -hmm. Quarter ounce, they go to seven, and then 10th mm -hmm. ounce, they go to 9%. So the smaller you get, the higher the premium, the mint charges. So right. that, that just trickles down to everyone else, right? Absolutely. And, and I think that's a fantastic example of how the fractional coins can get rather expensive. And so what you may see at retail for like that 10th ounce coin is a premium of about 100 bucks. Okay, so if you buy 10 of those to get your ounce, you're going to spend about $1,000 over the market rate for your ounce of gold. Okay, from an investment standpoint, ouch, that's not really a, a good way to go about it. Um, if you must have the Eagles, okay, but there are more better values, I would say, out there and not really... You're not really stacking when you're doing that like that, too. That's almost like buying the one gram gold bars and paying those high premiums, too. But if, say, for example, you're you're a grandparent and you want to give this 10th ounce gold eagle to each of your grandkids 
for Christmas and you've started this tradition and you've been doing it forever, for heaven's sake, keep that going on. You know, that's something those kids are going to remember forever. Uh, that's a completely different situation than this is an investment for me. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I actually look at the American Gold Eagles now as almost like a, a numismatic type thing uh, because mm -hmm. the premium compared to some of the other gold items, you know, you got your Maple Leafs, your Krugerans, uh, and what have you. Um, kangaroos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Kangaroos, very popular. It just seems like the uh, American Gold Eagles, just like the American Silver Eagles, are kind of getting uh, just too high of a premium for me personally. Mm -hmm. it, and it's a supply and demand situation. It's like as so many people are concerned about um inflation and and the dollar and things of that nature and so they're they're stacking to to hedge that um i think at the same time a lot of people are buying eagles and putting a lot of pressure on the on that particular media and and you're right that is starting to happen for gold as well as as silver um the supply is still pretty good for gold certainly better than silver because you know let's face it they're we're starting to approach 18 bucks over spot for a silver eagle, which is something I never thought I would ever see. Um, but uh, when it's time to sell them, you're you're not going to get pushback on, on on them as you liquidate. I like to call that Judgment Day. You know, you're whipping out aces on Judgment Day. That's great. I'm just not sure you're going to see all that premium back though, and so there may be better choices now. So. You know, if you really like them, love them, whatever, I would never tell you not to buy them. But again, as you're stacking, there may be better choices at the moment. Yeah. So let's say uh, someone wanted to buy a one ounce piece of gold and they were mm -hmm. looking at a one ounce gold bar, which is traditionally going to have a much lower premium than a one ounce gold coin. What would you say are kind of like the advantages or disadvantages yeah. of the two? Yeah. And that's that's a great, a great topic to bring up because when you when you get to that full ounce your your average premium is going to be 75 80 bucks for a bar okay it wasn't that long ago we had maple leafs on sale for 92 over spot well for a, a difference of maybe ten dollars you'd always take the coin because when you go to sell it whether you're going to sell it back to bullion max or or whomever or trade it or whatever you're definitely going to get that 10 bucks back than if you had just purchased a bar and you're selling a bar bag. So that's a that's one of my my favorites in that situation. Now they've gone up a little bit since then, but it's still a hundred bucks. Okay, e even if the the delta is twenty dollars, I would still take the maple. And uh, you know, it's a pure gold coin. Um, I've I've never seen anybody frown when you're whipping out maples on Judgment Day either. Um, you just, since they are 24 karat gold, you gotta, you gotta treat them, treat them carefully because they will get dinged and you can't undo that because 24 karat <laughs> gold is very soft. So you do want to handle it very carefully, but also in that, in that same kind of price range, and it depends on what's available at what given time, kangaroos are usually really close to the price of a bar. I think it was, you can spend a dollar more and get a coin. Of course you would. In that situation, it when it starts getting up, when we had buffaloes at 136 over spot, we couldn't keep them in stock. They were just flying off the shelves because what's more typical is more like 200 bucks over spot, which is kind of where they are now. But it like anything else right now with the supply changing all the time, it makes it really tricky to um count on always being able to get a particular item for a particular price because as things come and go you know the prices that we pay to get them also change so um so for a while there yeah i was so i was so used to maples at 92 and and buffaloes at 136 and uh, and kangaroos at uh at 82 over or whatever um but that's you know that may be for a short span of time and then things are going to turn over and you go, oh, now we've got Britannia's for, for about 88 over or whatever. And um, since the price is so close to a bar, get the coin. Um, the resale value is greater. Like I said, when you sell back to companies like us, 
And also on Judgment Day, I think people would rather see coins than uh, than bars, just guys. Yeah, I pretty much always recommend going with the coins. All right, well, uh, the other thing too with uh, gold that I think is important to talk about, uh, which which you brought up a few times, as you call it, Judgment Day. Uh, yes, Judgment Day. Se- selling your gold, right? Offloading. Um, when people want to sell their gold, uh, a lot of the time I recommend just go down to your local coin shop and see how much they'll pay you for it. Mm -hmm. And you kind of get a number in your head. And then if you want to sell to perhaps an online bullion dealer, you could Mm -hmm. go that route as well and see who will pay you more for it. What would you recommend for uh, people selling their gold down the road? I would say down the road, if they're not giving you something close to the market rate, somebody's taking advantage of you. Because online dealers like us are going to at least give you the market rate. So it's nice that you wouldn't have to send it in. So then you don't have to pay for shipping. You also wouldn't have to pay to insure it. So, you know, there are some additional costs to send it to me. uh, But, you know, we're we're gonna give you a fair deal. Also on our on our website, we have a a new sell to us area where you can see what we would what we would offer you. Just put in, you know, generic one ounce gold bar, or maybe it's a one ounce PAMP or whatever, and you'll see what we had paid for you. If worst case scenario, Take your phone and point out that we would pay that much if somebody's going to give you less and say, hey, would you match these guys? Why not? You know, worst case scenario, they'll they'll up their bid and and you can walk out of there with cash in your hands. You know, it doesn't hurt my feelings if our website helps you sell. You don't always have to sell to me, but if you like me better because I got you more money, I like that too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, sh- you should always sell for as much as you possibly can. Absolutely, absolutely. And if that turns out that we've got the best offer, that's fantastic. If I helped a, you know, a low offer get raised because even if they didn't meet it, it, it got better, you know, that's cool. That's cool. I'm I'm always strategy guy. Strategy, strategy, strategy. Absolutely. Uh hey, one last thing that I've heard people talk about a lot is um should I try and buy the 24 karat gold stuff or does it not really matter? Can I buy the 22 karat? Like for example, the American gold Eagles, the Krugerrands, mm-hmm. um, you know, a little bit different alloys cause the gold Eagles have some silver in them, but mm-hmm. should I, is one better than the other? Like, does it really matter? What are your thoughts on, on purity? Um, again, judgment day. It, it's going to depend on who your trading partner is. Um, Really, when you're talking about these government minted items, whether they're pure or whether they're alloys, you have to remember that quarter ounce eagle is still going to have a quarter ounce of pure gold in it. It, It's just going to have more metal in addition to that. So you're not running short because there's other types of metals in it. But it's really going to get down to um who you're trading with because let's face it the krugerrand is the granddaddy of of modern bullion so uh modern gold bullion that is so i don't think there are people who who necessarily would dislike it because it's an alloy they would just understand it's krugerrand same with an eagle being an eagle so i would say it really doesn't really doesn't make a difference and i still like you would buy the coin before i would buy a bar all things being equal price wise or close. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, lots of great information here, Sean. So thank you so much. And we'll have to uh, do another video again in the future. Sounds great. I had fun.